Okay, so we have equal volumes of part A and part B of our sort of clear 37 silicone, and we're using the B knife to get all of the material out and into the larger cup. Okay, and this is important so that we make sure we get all of the silicone uniformly mixed into one vessel, but the cup needs to be much larger to handle the expansion of the silicone during the vacuum step. And the vacuum step is only going to be for a couple of minutes, but there'll be a moment where the silicone rises up and then collapses back down. And that can be very intimidating if you don't know that's going to happen. So we have everything out of part B. And now we're going to do part A. Like so. So at this point, once we've introduced part A and part B together in the same vessel, the clock is ticking based on the specifications of the sort of clear polymer, right? So we've got everything in our cup, that's everything we can see, and what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to hold the blade and I'm going to roll the, the cup. And this is a common way to mix. It's sort of like what you see with the concrete mixing trucks. It works really well, you get a nice uniform flow, you're not introducing a bunch of air bubbles, and uh, you can see what you're doing very well. It's easy on the wrists, and it's not messy. So you sit there, and you're just rolling, and then what I'll do is I'll occasionally scrape everything. Ugh. Sensor light. Energy efficiency is not that efficient. Um, so, <laughs> as I was saying, I'll scrape the edge walls to make sure that there aren't any little portions that I've missed in the mixing process. And then I'll go back to that same uniform rolling mechanism. But you can already see how many air bubbles have been introduced in this mixing process. And so those are all gonna need to be vacuumed out using a vacuum chamber. This is the same vacuum chamber you can use for investing, if you've got one. But for sort of clear, getting the bubbles to collapse is really hard if you do not have a vacuum chamber. So if you're looking for something that isn't um, going to have bubbles, I would go with something that's got a lower viscosity, just because the bubbles come out a little, little faster and a little easier. So now we've got everything out, we've got our knife, We've cleaned it off. What I'm going to do is just set it so it's resting on our AB cups. And then we're going to take the camera and move over to the vacuum table where we have our cup. We're going to turn it to invest. starting to boil up. And it's getting to the point, let's get that more centered, it's getting to the point where it looks like it's going to boil over in the cup. And at this point, the silicone's at its maximum expansion. It's not going to get any bigger, and then it's just going to collapse back down. And so everything you see there is all the silicone's got. So you can vacuum it further, but it won't really make a difference after a minute or two. It's just gonna bubble down to a certain level, and each silicone's different, but this one will idle at that lower level. It'll give out a couple more large bubbles, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna shut off the pump, 
and you're going to turn it to release so when the atmosphere rushes back into the bowl, right, when it comes out and rushes into the cup, it's going to crush any remaining bubbles that are still there. That atmosphere's exertion of force will make them pop. So we're at that stable point where the bubbles aren't getting any bigger, they're not really popping. It's about the same size, it's not getting bigger, it's not getting larger, and it's not getting smaller. So we just wait for that last little bit to make sure nothing else is going to happen. Right? This is one of those steps where you can go and walk away for 5-10 minutes and come back, but you need to know what your silicone cure time is so it doesn't cure while it's degassing. So we're going to call that done. We're going to turn the machine off. And then we're going to let the atmosphere rush in. Okay. And so now we can look at our silicone. And it's got a nice clear body. So at this point, we're ready to take our part and pour it, pour our silicone over it. So what we're going to do this is the part that's really tricky. So what I'm doing is I'm holding the cup at a steep angle so that the silicone will come out, but I'm also creasing the cup so I get a good pour spout. Because what I want to do is just pour directly over that edge. So as that happens, I'm going to bring the camera angle down so we can see that process fully. Like so. From the side view. Okay. Here we go. So now I'm lining it up so it just goes to the very edge, trying not to let it touch my part. And so you can vacuum this a second time, but what I found is it doesn't really make a difference in terms of the overall functionality of the part. So most of the bubbles that you see remaining will either migrate to the top or crush down as soon as the silicone is done. But the hard part now is holding your silicone cup steady while you slowly let gravity do its work. And this is a pretty high viscosity material, so um, you will get an arm cramp if you haven't done it. But it's better to let it pour continuously than to try to get in there and scrape any silicone off with your hands. Just because each time you separate, you create a new set of air bubbles. And it's, I know it seems like you're doing more, but you're actually just making more work for yourself. So just really embrace that uh, long, patient, four step and as you see it cover over your part completely you can take a little bit of relief knowing that you're done with the hard part and that's when you can come back with the um, knife or the spoon or whatever scraping tool you've got to get the last of the silicone in your mold. So we're just over the edge of the part right now. To the point where I'm comfortable scraping. And there's going to be a lot of silicone coming out of this second pull. Get 
another batch. And I use the cup and the knife to get the last of the silicone off of your scraping blade, whatever it is. So I'll use the edge of the cup against the edge of the knife to get that full coverage necessary. Um, so what that looks like on camera is I'm pushing with the cup edge to create that silicone blob to clean the knife so that the knife can go and collect more silicone from the cup. And it's this back and forth you end up doing to collect the last of the silicone from your, your cup. Right. And the more you can get on your mold, the sturdier your mold's going to be and the less cleanup you have to do. If you leave any extra in your mold, that's not a problem. If you leave any extra in your cup, that's not a problem. Uh, I like having a little extra in the cup because then I can know when my mold is fully cured without having to take the time to poke my mold and possibly damage it. So we're going to call that good enough and I'll set it to time lapse to record anything else.